The Digital Revolution. News on demand. News on your phone. At the coffee shop. Anywhere, anytime. Yahoo. Facebook. Google. How on earth did we get here? It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's 1969. Back on Earth, the Internet is born. A computer message leaves the lab in L.A. Four universities, UCLA, Stanford, UC Santa Barbara, and the University of Utah are linked by computer. It's ARPANET, the Internet in its infancy. By 1971, there are more than a dozen links in the computer chain. Through the 70s and 80s, the fledgling Internet grew fast but quietly, remaining in the hands of scientists, academics, and the military. Live from the Berlin Wall. 1989, the year the Berlin Wall fell, Tim Berners-Lee created the World Wide Web and the Internet took off. I, William Jefferson Clinton, in 1993, net use grew a staggering 134,000 percent. This is insane. I've never seen anything like this. During the O.J. Simpson trial in 1995, millions are dialing up the web. AOL, CompuServe, and Prodigy got daily updates from Court TV. The big three providers had a combined 10 million subscribers. You're connected to MSNBC. In 1996, NBC News and Microsoft brought TV and the Internet together for the first time. Why is MovieLink our site of the night? Um, well, this is a great site because it's really useful. Um, you can order tickets to movies online. In 1996, people were still going to what? The World Wide Web? The Internet? You know, calling it the, the Internet, <laughs> you know, the webs, you know, the, the something web. And now it pulls up a screen where we can actually order the tickets. We buy them here, we show up at the theater, and they're waiting for us. By 1997, 50 million people are online in the U.S. and Canada. The Internet starts to speed up the news cycle. The prime example? Matt Drudge and his Drudge Report. When Drudge came around, a lot of news organizations were still just putting online whatever product they had from their regular publication or broadcast cycle. Newsweek magazine found out President Clinton had an affair with intern Monica Lewinsky, but Newsweek wanted more confirmation and held the story. Matt Drudge heard about it and splashed it on the internet, scooping Newsweek with its own reporting. Drudge is probably responsible for good or ill, uh, the increased immediacy of online news. Do you expect this to be one of the busiest times on the, on the internet? I really do, Matt. I think this may end up being the biggest day ever on the internet so far. In 1998, independent counsel Ken Starr's report on the Clinton affair is released on the internet. 20 million people read it online. Oh my God. That's when I think people started to realize, wow, not only is this a tool for news, but there's actually an audience out here who wants to read things directly. To me, that was just kind of like, okay, old media's gone. Now everything else here is new. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live show. Can you see it? On 9-11, people were so hungry for news, many mainstream news websites failed. Demand was 1,000 times the norm. CNN's website received 9 million hits an hour. But people found other voices on blogs. Journalists are not the only ones telling the big story. The Internet is changing the dynamic. People just needed to say something. A guy in Brooklyn, across the river from the World Trade Center, put on his blog, now I know what a burning city smells like. And I thought, wow, we used to say journalists write the first draft of history. I think this guy just did. And something changed. Something for journalism was changing. The software that now makes blogging so easy is helping change journalism from a lecture into a conversation. By 2003, 1.4 million blogs are active on the internet. People have the power to publish and the ability to comment immediately on anything they see. We need you to go out and get on Dean for America. Give us your email. We will promise we will not spam you. In 2004, candidate Howard Dean and an army of tech-savvy volunteers showed how to tap the power of the Internet to raise money and reach voters. 
and bloggers are gaining credibility. Some even got media credentials at the political conventions. CBS News released a statement today defending its report this week on President Bush's record in the Texas National Guard. In the fall of 2004, bloggers pounced on Dan Rather. Blogs question memos CBS used in a report on President Bush's National Guard service during Vietnam. In the end, CBS retracted the story, producers got fired, and Rather wound up retiring early. I made a mistake, we made a mistake, and I'm sorry for it. People now are able to talk back to journalists, and journalists can no longer hang up the phone. There's so much choice these days. While I wish millions of Americans weren't spending their day downloading videos of a cat flushing a toilet, I can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. What I can do is put on the best newscast. When YouTube debuted in 2005, it brought us cats and dogs, but also a new way for people to add news content to the mix, like Virginia Senator George Allen's macaca moment on the campaign trail. Macaca, or whatever his name is. The media in the past was transient. So what was on the air, if you didn't sit in front of your television when it was on the air, you didn't see it. Now it's got a shelf life of forever. In April 2007, a gunman goes on a rampage of Virginia Tech, killing 32 people. The scene is captured not by a journalist, but by a student on his cell phone. 71% of Americans now have access to the internet, and when a big story happens, people know where to go for the information. Our website received 53 million hits, which is absolutely amazing for a college newspaper. I remember when it seemed like the news cycle began to turn over twice a day, and now it turns over twice an hour. It's new media that's leading the way again. Technology is changing. So journalism is reacting to the technology like it always did. My daughter watches her dad's broadcast on her iPod in her college dorm or walking across the quad each evening when she has time. Fantastic. Now, network TV anchors blog. Video bloggers can look like TV anchors. Steve? Steve, are you there? Bloody phone. And citizen journalism is on the rise, too. With so many choices and so many voices delivered so fast, the best advice for everyone is always consider the source. Whatever the technology, the best journalism will always be about fairness, context, and accuracy.